Ghana is investing more and more into clean or renewable energy and they have named it Energy Transformation Agenda. So at this time, we are going to push it into the reservoir and we are all there for hands. Um, let's go. Hey. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. go, go, go. So in this video, we want to dive a little deep into it to know why they are doing that. When we went to Paris, we decided to become part of the global community of nations that felt that the temperature rise in the world must not get above 1.5. So all countries were asked to make commitments. And one of our commitments we did in, in Paris was outside the legacy uh, energy uh, fuels that we had. We are going to increase our renewable mix in the energy mix or renewables in our energy mix to at least 10% at the year 2030. Renewable in Ghana means 80% probably solar and about a few areas that we can do wind and our efforts in nuclear. Currently, Ghana is ranked the seventh country in Africa with the highest electricity access with a percentage of 84%. Countries like Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia have 100% energy access. Gabon also has 91%, representing number five in Africa. South Africa also has 85%, representing six in Africa, and Ghana has 84 But the president of Ghana, Nadodanko Akufuado's aim for Ghana's electricity access is 90 percent or 90 plus percent and we all know that ghana generates most of its electric power from hydro thermal energy and a little from renewable energy so moving from 84 percent to 90 percent means they need to generate more energy but generating more energy also increases the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere especially the hydro and the thermal energy and the aim of world leaders is that by the year 2050 the world will reach a net zero emission reaching a net zero emission simply means that removing an equal amount of greenhouse emissions from the atmosphere. World leaders have taken a lot of aggressive measures to achieve this net zero emission even by 2030. Some of these measures are 24 countries are to ban the use of fuel powered vehicles and a group of leading car manufacturers have also committed to end the era of fossil fuel powered vehicles by 2040 or earlier so the simple question we are asking today is is ghana ready for this net zero emission agenda if yes then how are they going to move from 84 percent electricity access to 90 percent or 90 plus percent well According to Anabo Matiopoku Prempe, who is the Ghanaian Minister for Energy, Ghana is now introducing more and more clean or renewable energy, such as solar, wind energy, and nuclear energy. And according to him, with the solar energy, they are installing the solar panels on top of all their dams so that these solar panels will serve as two things. One, to produce energy for the people and two, protect the water from direct sunlight to avoid evaporation. And that is a brilliant idea. Let's hear this and more from Honorable Maitiopoku Prempe. But before that, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you very much for liking. Now, enjoy. We committed ourselves after Paris 2015 to employ more clean energy into our system. Two things that means we have to do. We have to employ more solar or more hydro or these, all these clean fuels, or more wind power, more geothermal if it's possible, more wave technology power if it's possible, and nuclear power. So in this country, we are pursuing our advantages in solar and nuclear power to ensure that at least the base load that is necessary for industrialization, which we have been reliant on hydro in Ghana for a long time, and now gas, probably because God has blessed us, we would increase our uh, use of probably nuclear as well. On the nuclear side, we've selected a site for putting up a nuclear power plant and also se selecting a country partner to assist us in that. We are 
effort in the nuclear power area is being done under the auspices of the IEA, IAEA, such that Ghana conforms to international best practice standards and people don't start thinking that we want to go into nuclear because we want to produce other things, other things that are not good for the world at large. Like we said earlier, in the solar area, mean energy, VRA, we are all increasing their generation uh, in this area. And also, for islands on the Volta Lake and the far to reach places, we have adopted a technology of mini grid, uh, self catering mini grids in these islands because it's not economical or virtually uh, we don't have the money to put the national transmission network uh, through the river or under the seabed, under the riverbed to send electricity there. So we have adopted these off grid solutions. And this year, we plan to do three off-grade solutions in Ada area uh, in Ghana here. We are also at the same time improving the stoves that we use to cook, called improved cook stoves. So far we have distributed over 240,000 and we are still distributing more to ensure that those who are cooking with charcoal, cook with charcoal more efficiently uh, and also transit to gas in due time. So we want to do 38 mini grids, or we've done 38 mini grids. We've put 35,000 solar comb systems on some schools, senior high schools and things. And we'll continue to ensure. We would also support the general populace who want to adopt solar in their houses. Because you can put solar panels in your house and at least for the two most expensive things, we have water heating and air conditions. We have air conditions now that you can connect even to solar. And there's a net metering system abroad so that if you produce, storing solar is expensive because the discharge rate is less than 50% from even the best batteries we have so far. So we want people to produce more energy but be able to sell the excess if they don't need it. Because in Ghana, we all go to work or find some work to do during the daytime and we rush back at home. So our peak times are, is in the evening. But in the afternoon, when the sun is up and we are out, if you put the solar system to your house, you don't need to store. We would encourage you to sell it to ECG or your distribution company. And such that you sell it to ECG, not at a loss, but at a profit to ECG. So ECG is very happy. We have ongoing renewable projects like the Bui Pa. They've signed over 150 megawatts of solar panels. And interestingly, Bui Power has um, studied being able to put solar panels on their river surfaces. I think if it works out well, which I believe it's, it is working, and then all our hydro surfaces can be populated with these solar panels to help us in generation. It will do two things for us. In this country, where we can put a lot of the solar panels is in the north. That is precisely where we find it difficult to evacuate power from. Because we have to build the substations and other infrastructure to be able to wheel power from the north. But at least, wherever there's a hydro dam, there's already a substation that exists in that place. And so hybridizing the solar panels and the hydro dams will be a more efficient usage, both in the conservation of water and in our ability to pump energy across the country. So we are encouraging all the hydro surfaces, even including Ghana water, their water surfaces, their few dams that they have, they can still put solar panels there to assist in generation of energy uh, for use. We are experimenting with solar panels in Jubilee House to make Jubilee House even more efficient. Like we said, we'll continue distributing the cook stove and improve that one to gas with time under our LPG for National Development uh, Program. So basically, these are some of the efforts we are trying to put in place or we have put in place to ensure that we continue having our lives on. Thank you very much for watching. Please let us know your thoughts and suggestions inside the comment section below. My name is Sharif Harana. May God bless you and see you in our next video. Macrao.